sun's out and we're busy cutting holes in the boat making holes in the boat it was already part of it was already quite holy before wasn't it leaky leaky and we haven't gotten you don't think we've got enough fiberglass to fill in the <laughs> it's um possibly something we should have thought of before we took the hatch out Here's my man, it's Sunny, and we are painting, 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 painting. Look at this beautiful seagull striker and martingale. Bit of carbonness going on. And the four stay fitting. And he's painted the inner force day. And what are you doing now, babe? Getting your first coats of Duropox on where I can. First coats of what? Duropox. So that's the type of paint, right? Yeah. And this is the high build stuff that you can sand back and... Uh, no, this is a, um, a blended epoxy urethane primer thing from... Race boat world. Uh, it's halfway between a primer and a top coat, um, and it sticks really well to composites. So, um, but yeah, you can get it to build reasonably high. And uh, the sun is shining finally in Spain, and we're questioning the wisdom of painting this all black. Yeah, bloody what? It's kind of got to cook eggs on it. Cool though, so the beam's pretty much done and you've managed to um, get, get the trampoline tracks all in. Yep. You want to talk us through that because originally I'm pointing at the um, boat now. You can sort of see where we've moved the track up a bit from the original position. And then a new black line where it is where it's going to go and Shane has attached it's not PVC though, it's something, it's some sort of electrical conduit plastic stuff, isn't it? Yeah. And we've just laminated those in, a little, little bit of carbon. A little bit of more, more of your magic vacuuming, vacuum bagging. And um, we're going to try and get this painted in the next several days and then cut the slots in so that we can stick some metal rod through those PVC pipes. Yep. And then the cutout slots where the um, metal pipe is exposed will be the attachment points to tie the trampoline to the boat. Yes? So, um, it's all that. And then um, an anchor roller arrangement thing's gonna go somewhere here.
Talk to me. Hello. Hello, viewers. <laughs> what are you doing? What am I doing? Doing my favourite sanding. Seems to be my life sanding. And I hate sanding. It sucks. Don't feel boats. Um, I am um, cleaning up the 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 the, the top of, of our, the mast. Top top of the mast. What was the top of the mast? Which is now the end of our long drawn. Um, yeah, I am uh, undoing someone's life work here. It's a piece of art, isn't it? Piece of art. Yeah, yeah. So Amazing. The, um, Mastheads on these rigs were um, quite a lot of fun to build. Uh, I did four of them in, way back in 2003 for the cup then. And um, yeah. This is, this is a 2007 though, isn't it? Yeah, this is a 2007 era one. Uh, a little bit fancier than what we were doing back in 03. But um, yeah, there's um, some seriously cool stuff going on here. Um, so small small let in on what's going on here um this is where the track was glued on um and this is where the um the hook arrangement was for the uh lock uh in particular lock strop um, so the main uh would actually come up the track and then there would be a special little uh, fitting on it, depending on which team it was. Some used loops, some used bolted in titanium thingies with hinges and little uh, bullets that unlatched. And it was some really, really cool, cool shit going on. Um, but to hoist it, uh, if you go back into the old videos, you'll see every time a main was hoist, there would be a guy at the top of the mast. And that was because they used to use a masthead halyard to hoist the uh, main. And that's what this gap here is. Um, so you have the port and starboard halyards. So this is the back of the mast. This is the front of the mast. These are the two masthead halyards, uh, starboard and port. And the port halyard would actually come out. So there was a gate across here. And the guy would actually come up the mast. And he would open the gate. And he would take the port masthead halyard. And he would flip it over backwards. And it went over a little sheave here. And this is what they actually hoisted the main on. So they'd hoist the main on this halyard, and what this did, it meant that there was no mainsail halyard, and there's no sheaves and all the rest of it, so it made the whole top end of the rig a little bit lighter. So they'd hoist the, mass, uh, the main on this port spinnaker halyard, which is now facing backwards. So we'd come up the track, then he would then uh, lock the locking mechanism, which would lock the main in place up here. Then he would take the masthead halyard off, Put it back into its um, original position and then he would come down with that um, masthead halyard with them and when they went to drop the main they would ease the boom ease the bang ease the cano and then um, pull a little trip line which would then let go a, um, a mechanism in here and basically the mainsail would fall down um, or if they're onto it they'd actually send the guy up again and he would do the reverse. He'd come up, he'd hook the uh, halyard on here, uh, hook, hook the halyard back over onto the main, they'd trip it and then they'd let the main down nicely. Um, That's cool. Yeah, so that, that was what's going on here with the halyards and boxes and locks and things. But then there's also um, the runners. So this is the primary um, backstay attachments here and they actually had a fairing around here and you can see where I've cut. There's a little bit of rower cell foam in here and just a layer of 200 grams. So it was all fared over to make them more aerodynamic, blah, blah, blah. Lots and lots of time and lots of effort uh, to make the, these rigs a little bit more aerodynamic up here. Uh, this one here, this was the old um, jumper. So the jumper stay was attached in here and um, would be a Synthetic PBO cable because the carbon ones weren't around in this era. Oh, maybe they were. I can't, I can't remember that far back now. Um, and yeah, and this was a fairing that went to the jumper. This was the backstay. This pin here would have been part of that whole lock arrangement. And what I'm doing now is I'm putting some nav lights in here. So I'm cool, dude. 
I'm undoing someone's good work and um, cutting into a nice bit of fairing. Someone's oh, we're recycling, reusing yeah, and recycling repurposing. And reusing. Yeah, so. Otherwise it gets chopped up and put in the bin. Yeah. And what I'm doing, so I've got some carbon angle. Uh, it's been pre-made. And this carbon angle is gonna go in here and in here to make a channel. Then my nav light will go in there and I'll chuck some foam into the gap here and I'll make it all aerodynamic again. Woohoo! Uh, no, I'll just make it look uh, nice. Look and then like it's meant to be. Look like there, it's right? meant to be. And then this angle I will cut into the same shape as the um, nav light. Now, why am I putting the nav light in this carbon channel, you ask? Well, um, well, let's say I've, I've done enough miles at sea to know that nav lights are vulnerable, very, very vulnerable. And our nav lights are up the front here, which is gonna be next to code zero furlers, next to um, asymmetric spinnaker attacks, blah, 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 blah. And I can guarantee that um, if I don't have this protection on here, I'm going to get a tack line caught around it and it's going to rip the um, nav line off. If I put the protection on it, the chances are greatly reduced because Murphy won't come to play because I've spent days making brackets to stop it. Plus, we, we thought about putting it on the Martingale, didn't we? Because yeah. originally we had it on our yeah. Seagulls tracker. Yeah. But we decided that it was a bit yeah, so, likely to get hit yeah, there. Yeah, having the, the nav light here is as good for a bunch of reasons um, one it's sort of up a little bit higher which I like but the issue is if I've got the nav light here and we're flying the code 0 and the um, A2 and A3 which the tack sits about here it actually completely blankets the nav light um, on one side so it actually becomes illegal because if you read through your coal regs that your um, nav lights need to be um, unimpeded by any things. Um, also our Lanceron is high enough, it's above the top of our bows, so um, it's unimpeded. One of the things that's sort of not cool, and it was actually the same with the, um, the old nav light system, is that when the nav light's on and it's a good dark uh, night and if it's raining or we're going quite quick and there's a lot of spray around, um, it lights the bows up red and green, mm. which is a bit of a pain. Um, I could put nav lights on the bows, but then the nav lights are even lower again, and because they're quite wet, they're always in spray, which means that they're going to get wet and corrosion, blah, 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 blah. So this is sort of the less of all the evils. I think it's an awesome idea. Um, we were going to put the uh, nav lights on the mastheads uh, originally, um, which was a nice idea, but then we made our mast rotating and that cocked up all the... Oh, sorry, yeah, on our mast. Yeah. 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 So, and yes. That took all the um, nav lights on the mast option away. Whoops. Um, well, we can do it. we just got to put gimbals and whatever into it, don't we? There's some sort of cleverness that you've got to do with no, to make it work. It. <laughs> You're not going to do it. Okay. No. All right. And so, um, any update on our trampoline? You've got your anchor roller. Anchor roller is all carbony. Spooched on. Thingy going on. Um, Martingale Seagull Striker looks awesome. And the black strip that you can see that hopefully shows up in the film is. Trampoline track. Trampoline tracks. It's got all the holes in it ready to. Yeah, so paint and the front. It? All I've got left now on the front end is these nav light brackets, which hopefully I'll get these glued on tonight. Um, and I want to put an extra little big lump of carbon inside where the four stay pin is, um, just because, just because I can. Um, yeah, that's our insurance, isn't it? Yeah, it's a bit of insurance. Um, it's all good as it is, but. Um, there's no split pin in there. No, there's no split pin in there. That's because it's all come apart again shortly. <laughs> um, yeah, so we're, we're actually now uh, into hopefully end of tomorrow. We're in full paint mode. 
So all the track for the trampoline has been done. It's all being glued, laminated, primed, fed, uh, and all the rest. All the notches have been cut. Yeah, hopefully you can see that. Yeah, yeah the, I've got the stainless steel rod to go inside. Um, so yeah, now it's full blown, uh, lots and lots of sanding, 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 painting, 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 make it look half respectable. Um, and then once it's made half look, look half respectable, then I can start doing trampolines. Yay! Yay! <laughs> no. Yay, because we're at that stage, and nah, uh, because doing trampolines is nearly as bad as boat building. <laughs> Instead of having black dusty hands, I'll have red bleeding hands. <laughs>